tripartite First Nations Health Plan was signed in 2007, health directors made it clear that implementing the plan was not something that could happen off the side of their desks. In response to this request for resources, the First Nations Health Council mandated the creation of community engagement hubs. Community hubs provide proactive resources directly to groups of First Nation communities who agree to communicate, collaborate, and plan together in support of better health for their communities. Today, with 29 community hubs involving over 160 BC First Nations, the benefits of hubs has definitely caught on. At the community level, hubs are identifying health priorities and also barriers. Through working together as nations and in partnership with government, many of these barriers are being overcome. This video tells the story of five community hubs and what the hub communities have been able to achieve through working together. Hub, it refers to helping us build, and I think it's a perfect uh, descriptor of really what it is, because it is really helping us build our community. I see, I see the hubs as being very beneficial to the community because they work at a grassroots level. They're able to uh, touch base with the people, the community members themselves. This isn't something that historically has happened. You know, for us all to sit around a table together as equal partners, all focused on the same goal of improving the health and well-being of our people. And the strength that we have together is greater than the work that we're doing individually. What the hubs do initially is create a level of conversation that didn't exist before, that the health directors and the resources uh, that are available in the community um, currently run in a way where they do not have a lot of proactive capacity. The hubs represent that proactive capacity to look at innovation, to look at health issues, to create a conversation on the things that they want to talk about. So they give that, that opportunity to really look at what's important to them as a group of people around the health and wellness of their people. I believe uh, good community health is when a nurse comes around to visit the elders and the handicapped. It um, covers all aspects, the spiritual, the um, intellectual, the mental. The Yemi Skaukatal Lama Latsamat A Community Hub is located in the majestic Fraser Valley region. It includes 11 First Nation communities and was created in 2008. I can remember as a child, you know, the types of health services we had. Most of the babies um, were born at home because of our location, we're semi isolated. If they went out anywhere to see a doctor for any complications, they had to go by canoe because we didn't have a road. What do you have in your community that you want to keep and build upon for future generations? The Yemi Skaukatal Lama Latsamata Hub has gathered the community through workshops to determine what their health needs are. The hub committees are a very important working group to move those programs up to the next level. We're busy identifying you know, what programs do we have? You know, how well do they serve our people? What improvements do we need? And where are their gaps? We all gathered the health priorities from the, from the youth. So we know what they want and value and want to keep and build upon. We know what they see as gaps. We know what they would wish for their community if they had a Christmas wish list. Through dynamic workshops, the Yemi Skaukatal Lama Latsamat A Hub is working together with a focus on traditional healing methods. As a peoples, for many years, we never had a choice as to many things that's happening in our lives. People invaded us, took our lands. Now we can have a choice as to how we're going to heal ourselves. Save this to make the medicine for the winter. Our hub has worked on quite a few community events, gatherings. And this one, you would just make tea. I teach traditional medicine. In the years I've worked with people, I found that they, were, they weren't quite sure as to what traditional medicine were, because you can't just go to the yellow pages and say, oh, I'm gonna find a traditional healer. If we can go back to our ancestors, how healthy they were. If we can go back to use some of the things that they used to be healthy. 
it's reconnecting the communities to each other. Traditionally, we used to all work together, but over the years, people started working in isolation. And now I see that we're, we're bringing communities together. It's to the improvement of our health. You know, um, what do we have here? Uh, what more can we have here? How can we serve our people better? It's important to have an, a baseline understanding of First Nations and their ability to take control of their own uh, decision-making regarding health. So the hubs do that. They, they get information, they talk to their communities about what are your priorities, what do you know about health. So that's key um, around the community development and community-driven process. We see the purpose of the hub is, is to get organized, to identify our needs and to figure out what it's going to take for us to become a benefactor of the health system or how to make that change and to make our wellness our reality. Good community health would be when community all comes together to prevent illnesses in their community. It's being out there on the land, being connected. Being involved with your community. Strong in mind, culturally. Good community health is the health of the land because to improve the health of the land is to improve the health of the people. Located in West Bank, in the heart of the interior of British Columbia, the Okanagan Nation Alliance is home to the Okanagan Community Hub that was created in April 2008. The hub consists of seven community First Nations and three friendship centers. I think that we are enhanced being with the First Nations Health Council's hub because we're able to have the resources to bring people together. This successful hub model has had an immediate and direct benefit to its communities. With its focus on the connection of people and land, the hub is creating opportunities for its people to reinvigorate the traditional teachings that are the cornerstone of good health for Okanagan people. A really big thing that I've been hearing from community members is the health of our people is really the health of our land. And if you consider, I guess, the current health status of Okanagan Nation members, and you really look at, I guess, the historical processes that have removed us from our territories, you can really see a strong correlation between the two. We've done the Taking Back Traditional food, Okanagan Foods and Games project, and that was really getting people out on the land, because we do have a lot of knowledge keepers out there, but we also have a lot of people that have never gone berry picking or, or don't have hunters in their families. And so to have the opportunities available to them to bring together the people who know and the people who want to learn. Because that is a huge component of health and that is part of our traditional diet. This is a, a, a white-tailed buck. Okay, trim the meat off of that. For me, it's an everyday part of life, just in my family. We were raised that way, canning every year the food that you're going to eat for the winter. And so it's very natural for my family. Need somebody to wipe the top of the jars off. It, and it's about like having that traditional food to eat. I don't know if you ever feel that way sometimes where you just really get hungry for food that you've eaten while you're growing up. And it's really important for us to, to maintain those connections with the land. I really envision that the communities are going to work together and make this their own. And so that they're able to bring those, together those ideas forward and to help create the programs and services that they vision and be able to create that with the support from the First Nations Health Council. They're now starting to hear, you know, what, what a hub is, but they're still not quite sure exactly what we do. So that has been, you know, a bit of a challenge. Our hub um, has, you know, faced its own set of challenges, and mainly it's around change. You know, when you introduce change and, and you try and open people's minds to a new way of doing things, uh, you have to kind of ease into it. A lot of people um, in the communities really didn't understand um, what this process is all about. I can take our community for an example. Um, Chehalis is um, an independent um, band and, and does everything, you know, independently. So their questions were, you know, um, so if we get involved with this hub, um, regional hub, um, committee, what does that mean? Are we going to lose anything by it? And so um, we had to provide some education on that part. In the past, uh, wellness wasn't a political priority. And it's not just in our communities, it's in all of BC. 
so it, I think it's really uh, it's quite critical for us to really have that understanding. There was an expectation that the work would get done a little bit faster than we thought it would. And because of the big uh, community development mandate and community driven process that we're trying to achieve, that uh, it slowed the process down slightly. So what happened was the provincial federal governments got together and basically hit the reset button last year. So it gave us uh, 10 years starting from now. So it'll give us till 2020, which is uh, a bit of a relief in terms of timelines, but also a, a good uh, realization on the government's part about how long and how difficult this process may be. Good community health, I believe, is multi-dimensional. It's looking at all of the facets of someone's life that contributes to their overall health and well-being. It's looking at um, what are known as the health determinants, education, housing, poverty, the economy, and health services to have access to um, the services they need when they need them. Children having um, lots of opportunities to grow and develop into uh, the people that they want to become. The Halkaminam Health Hub is located in the Cowichan Valley region of Vancouver Island. It consists of six First Nations and one Friendship Centre. With a focus on relationship building and cultural safety, the Halkaminam Hub offers a unique approach on building with their Valley partners for the future. There needs to be some major communication between our health providers, between the Couch and District Hospital, and probably the front, the front line people that are there to ensure that we're all receiving the same services as everybody else. We know that cultural safety is an important issue, uh, and we know that the health authorities have uh, room to grow in terms of improving how they offer culturally safe services. Our Cultural Safety Committee has brought together representation from the Couch and District Hospital, elders from our communities, youth from our communities and Aboriginal health care providers. It's really provided us an opportunity to engage in some meaningful dialogue about cultural safety issues that have been raised by community about their experiences at the hospital. Transportation is a new initiative. So the hub is a way to, to have kind of structured, ongoing conversations about the delivery of health services and how we can partner. We had to spend the first portion of our year focusing on hearing some of the concerns, reading through letters that had been written, hearing stories from elders who had experiences at the hospital that were negative, and then work towards collectively finding solutions to improve that situation. And now the, the whole transition, thanks to the administration, thanks to the Cultural Safety Committee, it's really done a 180. I think there has to be a solid communication core between the hub and the hospital. And not just administration, we need to involve staff, involve community members, because that's who we're working for. It's important to me because I'm an elder now, and I feel that I need to get the same services as the next person that's waiting in the same room. And I think that um, all the elders in our community, even the younger people, need to ensure that someone is trying to make things better for our community and for our community members. Hub is helping us plan for a healthier future. The Hub is bringing us together. We are working together to build healthier communities. Communication is the key. Well, the Hub has been beneficial to these communities because it's actually given us some resources that have never been available really to do detailed planning around health and wellness. The Hub has been beneficial to us because it has brought our people together. We're able to meet with the people and for us it's both on and off reserve so that's an opportunity that um, certainly the people off reserve are feeling happy that they're included in this process. The Community Engagement Hub process is extremely valuable in that it provided our community with an opportunity to develop relationships. You can tell the difference in the activity, in the participation in discussions between nations that are in hubs and nations that aren't necessarily engaged through a hub process. The intent obviously is to communicate and have no um, community left behind, but there's a definite advantage to being part of a hub network, to have some fiscal resources, as well as being connected directly with the community development liaison 
and even myself at some level, to hear of information, to understand, have somebody to pick up the phone and call. Getting your family strength, and it comes about in healthy relationships. A beautiful community that we're in, that we all feel good about one another. We have healthy relationships. We're able to um, think of our future and you have to think of our children. So if you want to have a happy home, you have to have a healthy lifestyle. So that's um, things that we have to, in our meetings, we promote with our, these gatherings that we have is helping us do that. Located in the beautiful Pemberton region, the Lower Statlium Hub is comprised of four First Nations. Close in heart, but not in proximity, these communities are small and isolated along the corridors of beautiful Lillooet Lake. It's pretty sad the way I look at Pshkatin as a, we're the forgotten people. Especially when there's an emergency and we don't have any phones here. It is an issue for ambulance service, emergency services, and also for other services that we would like to see is counseling, you know, addictions counseling, anger management, those types of things that were not easily accessible. It's usually our membership has to travel out, and the problem with that is that they don't all have vehicles, and it's a way of trying to get transportation to get to wherever the service is. Our hub has collectively worked on basic planning processes, taking measures to make improvements, bring some accountability to the system. Basic things like that have really helped with capacity, and that's going to help us as we, as we work towards the vision of uh, making sure that we take care of our own people. These are part of the handouts that I'll be bringing around and handing it out to the community members. We want to say this is where we live, these are the things that we're faced with in our community. I think some of the biggest challenges have been really to engage everyone. We found our most effective tool was in face-to-face -face meetings. It's all about the community, like what the community members would like to see. Our language and our culture and our ways of living is very important to me. With this, the CEH dollars is that we had some socializing events here so that was actually to get people out of their homes to learn to do things together, have fun doing things, interacting with one another was a, a healthy way to start our planning. And our key objective is to make sure that each community has a basic comprehensive community health and wellness plan. If you want a health plan, I think the best person to build it is ourselves, not the government, because they don't know what it is that we go through. So I'd encourage people to take advantage of the opportunity to build their own health plan, to suit their community, fit the needs of the community, and also have the participation of all in the community. The bigger process is there to create the room and the space eventually for us to, to meet our needs. But it's up to us to determine what those needs are. We're building for the future of our children. They're going to have something in place, you know, as they get older, and hoping that we have uh, all the facilities and the uh, professional services not too far off. The hubs are a slightly different perspective. They are the community. They know what needs to happen and in essence are revitalizing some of that knowledge around health, how communities care for each other, how families care for each other, and really bringing that back up so that we can hear those voices at the regional level, provincial level, and then again reinforce that language with our government partners when it comes to providing direction for the First Nations Health Plan and the Tripartite Health Plan. We all know that we're all, all underfunded, right? Some communities don't have a youth worker, some don't have maybe a foot doctor. So it's trying to create ideas to generate that to make sure that those services get to our people. It's very important for us to work together with the other First Nations and also with um, the higher politicians and to ensure that they're hearing what our people need and what our elders need the most. The premise of the Community Engagement Hubs is to bring grassroots voices into the implementation of the Tripartite First Nations Health Plan. 
and to support First Nations to determine and achieve their own health priorities. We are working together to bring better health to our communities. We are meeting, we are talking, and we are learning. We are learning together. The hub brought us together to communicate. Good community health means community members um, working together to make things better. Good doctors, good clinics, good treatments. No alcohol? No smoking. Healthy, vibrant community, always growing. With only two First Nations on board, the Finley Hub is located in one of BC's most scenic northern locations. Living in Kodacha and living in Seike, we were geographically dislocated from any other communities because we're so far away. We had no full-time doctor. The doctor would come in 1.5 days per month. When you look at the overall picture, the health professionals were not here. These small northern communities of Seike and Kwadacha have discovered hubs are paving the way to huge benefits. It would make more sense if our two communities got together and begin to start addressing some of the similar issues together. Because the population in these two communities, like 300 in Fort Ware, 250 to 300 in Seike, I mean, overall, if you're trying to go get some funding for that type of program, you know, like for program services, whatever, realistically, you're not going to get recognized when your population's so small. The Finley Hub has, is the smallest hub in the province. We are a young hub. We're only in our first year. Initially, the community was very, very clear about what it was they wanted to see, and they are also clear about the fact that they wanted to see action. BC Air Ambulance. They cannot come in at night because there's no landing lights. Let's say in a case where a huge emergency happens. It's getting dusk outside, um, the weather's really not that great, and we have somebody there that definitely needs to get to a hospital setting ASAP. When someone gets hurt, our capacities to treat are quite limited. My wife almost uh, died in the clinic about two years ago. and. Uh, we couldn't get her out because it was dark. And, and that was such an incredible experience to me. I, I, I finally understood what it was really like um, to, to have a family member who was sick and there's just you know, nothing you could do. You just had to wait until um, the day came. And, and it, it was a really good experience for me. It was horrible. Um, but at the same time, I think it gave me a much better understanding of what people face when they live in such an isolated place. So the one that we started with was the one that was the top priority and that was getting the airfield lit up. One of the discussions came up as to if, well, if we had landing lights, we'd be able to land. Um, so the process started, like how do we get to this point where we're going to get the, the lights? We did a study to see what other options there were, and this option came up, which is new technology. It's solar-lighted technology. One of the greatest things about the hub is that it's helped people to focus and I think for many years people have been coming into these communities and asking them, you know, what are the things that they need to see happen and, and of course oftentimes um, people haven't seen the results of that. And what we're starting to see is tangible benefits coming from people working together. Ourselves together, the two communities, we walk forward together. Through working together, these two communities were successful in acquiring the much-needed funding for solar lights on their airport landing strip. When the sun goes down, these two communities will now have the lights needed for emergency air ambulances to land at night. We don't know necessarily that any more funds are going to come and no one's going to come with a magic wand and automatically grant all our wishes around health uh, service and delivery. What we can do is facilitate an opportunity for health directors, health leads and 
uh, just your average community member to sit around a table and talk about what the, where the solutions are. And that's been the piece that's been missing in health in a way is that there wasn't an opportunity for uh, people to gather and to sit together at the same table and really come up with some good plans about how we're going to address some of these very, very complex issues. We really want the relationship, the legacy of what we're, the work we're doing to last for our future generations so that the hospital is viewed as a place that's welcoming. As First Nations, as people, we deserve service just like anybody else. So despite tribal groupings or jurisdictional boundaries of regional health authorities, that it's very important for them to recognize that and figure out how, it's, how they're going to provide service. Ten years, we'll see a most definite improvement in each of the communities. And we'll see that in our children and, and the happiness that hopefully they'll be, they'll be realizing and that in turn will make improvements in the generations to come. With hard work, dedication, and the will to succeed in improving First Nations health, community engagement hubs are destined to flourish in the years to come.